Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, first of all, before we start, I would like to say uh, thank you to uh, Oshrat and all the team here in WeWork. They have uh, really uh, helped us uh, get started and get off the ground here. And they've been amazing and they've been tolerating all our crap. <laughs> so thank you very much. And uh, first is uh, my talk about React Component Wars. And following me, uh, we'll, after me, we'll have a short break. Um, and then uh, the talented uh, Jonathan Bergman, who is Director of Engineering at WeWork. Right? Cool. All right. So um, let's get started. Um, so first of all, a little bit about Wix Engineering. Um, Wix Engineering is uh, based in uh, three different countries. Uh, we are in uh, Lithuania, in Ukraine, in Israel. Uh, we now have a new site, like you probably already know, in uh, Haifa, right here. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm an engineering team leader. I work here at Wix. I've been with Wix for about a year and a half. And uh, I started the uh, uh, site here in uh, Haifa. Uh, I work at a company at Wix, which is called uh, Wix OS. Um, basically, we are responsible for um, the back office of our registered users. Um, specifically, my team, we are responsible for the dashboard, which is Wix's most visited page for registered users with over uh, 320K views per day. Um, uh, a little bit more about Haifa. Um, I live pretty close by. I live in Kirat Motskin, so I had uh, the personal uh, benefit of starting this place. But in addition, uh, I think uh, you all know that Haifa has a great community of devs, and uh, we really want to help the community here. And we love how uh, the community embraced us, and we're trying to do the same back. Uh, we already met with um, people from various companies and startups here. Uh, to share knowledge, to just have a beer or go to lunch, and it's been great so far. So um, if you want, come talk to us um, afterwards. Uh, not, even if you're not looking for a job, it's okay. <laughs> if you are looking for a job, that's even better. Um, you can go to our Wix site, uh, job site, and see the open positions. And um, enough about that. Let's get down to business. So. Um, before we get started, uh, I want to ask how many people here use uh, React in uh, production? How many people never used React at all? And how many just used it like for, um, I don't know, like prototyping or just like um, some small project or something like that? All right, so we have, uh, I think like half of the audience uh, are just, um, uh, never used it or just uh, used it basically. So um, a little bit about uh, what's React. Um, so React is a JavaScript uh, library um, built by uh, the good people at Facebook. And this library, um, basically it helps you build a great UI with relative ease. Uh, you don't have to, I mean comparing this to other frameworks which I've used in the past like um, AngularJS, Backbone, Marionette, uh, jQuery prototype, um, I feel this is um, a very mature uh, framework and it's very uh, friendly and easy to use. Uh, and we use it in Wix production um, pretty much exclusively. Our legacy code is, is with AngularJS, um, but everything new is in uh, React. And so a little bit how about the way that React uh, works. Um, basically React, it's um, a collection of uh, components. Think of it of like uh, Lego pieces, um, with big pieces rendering smaller pieces and smaller pieces and smaller pieces until you get to the very, very tiny, tiny piece. Like imagine that little Lego which is really hard to get out. Um, basically those are the divs and spans and TRs and tables and all that stuff that you already know from basic HTML which go into the DOM. And you can see them right here. Basically we have a, a root component <coughs> and an app, a text box, text, and a table. <coughs> and basically we have the little tiny Lego pieces at the end. <coughs> the way uh, uh, a component in React uh, decides that it needs to render or checks if it needs to render again is basically if its parent told it that, hey, I rendered again, so you probably should do it the same. 
The second reason why a component might need to render is if its props or state has changed. Um, the props is basically variables which are passed from the parent to the child. Uh, and then if I, let's say I have a component which is a hello name, hello world kind of thing. If I tell her first my name is Eyal, it will render once. And if I change the name to Yevgeny, the name will change it and the component will be rendered. The state, it's an internal uh, variable of this component and it changes, it can change all the time. A classic example of this is uh, if you have a component which is a text field, which I'm going to show in a sec. And you, while you're typing, you are setting the state over and over again. And basically that fills the value of that text field. Um, the way that the uh, um, rendering takes place basically is like I said, first it starts by the parent or the state change, and then it goes to a thing called virtual DOM. Virtual DOM, it's basically React's um, selling point of high performance. When you're doing DOM manipulation, straight to the DOM manipulation, it's very, um, it's very pricey for performance. Changing the DOM itself, it's, uh, it's heavy, it's very costly, and we try to avoid it at all costs. Um, so basically what the React does, it has a virtual DOM, which is basically a duplication of that same DOM in memory. And once uh, a component changes, it tells the virtual DOM, hey, I've changed. And that virtual DOM does a comparison with the actual DOM. And once it's, it goes over all these components, and once a component looks different in the DOM than the virtual DOM, the virtual DOM knows, hey, I need to flush that to the DOM, and then basically the component renders and everything looks different on screen. Um, the cost of performance here, it basically goes from lightest to heaviest. So checking if a component needs to render again in the component itself, it's, uh, it, it costs us the least amount of uh, CPU. The virtual DOM costs more. It's not relative, the <laughs> amount, it's not three times more or nine times more, it's just more. Uh, and the DOM is the most uh, costly operation, so we probably want to try to avoid that at all costs. So let's talk about um, the component types which we have in React. Um, the most basic component which we have is a function component. This is basically as bare bones as it gets. If you go to react.io, I guess, I don't remember the website's address. This is probably the classic example you'll see. It's, it's just a function, like any other function in JavaScript, which gets a variable. Uh, it's an object, in this case, it's name. And that function returns an h1, which we said is the smallest piece of Lego in the end. And it will print out hello name. So if I pass to this function, hello Eyal, it will print out an H1 with hello Eyal. Um, this is basically the reason a lot of people use this kind of component. It's because it's very slim. It's very declarative. You, it's exactly like you, you saw this. People who've, who've never seen React before looked at, look at this and they probably already figured out what's going on. You don't need to explain uh, a lot more about it. Um, but there are also downsides to this kind of uh, component. Uh, as you probably s uh, saw, there is no such thing as state here. And we, have no, we don't have a thing called life cycle method. Um, a state, like we said, it's the internal uh, variables of this component, and we don't have it here, and we don't have access to this in the React component, in React function components. And the life cycle methods are basically um, hooks, which are, um, are triggered after different lifecycle events. For example, when a component mounted, there is a function called component did mount, and it will be triggered once a component mounts into the DOM. Component did update after a component has updated, and so on and so forth. For those of you who already uh, know React, you probably, when I said there is no state, you probably thought about, hey, there is this thing called hooks. Uh, we'll get back to those hooks uh, later, don't worry, I promise. Uh, but for now, let's just keep it simple and we'll move forward. The second kind of uh, component that we have is a class component. 
The class component, uh, as the name probably already tells you, is a class. As you can see, it's not uh, another, it's, just, it's not just a function. Underneath, under the hood it is a function because we don't really have classes in JavaScript. Um, but in reality, uh, we have a class here and it extends the React component class, which is that base class of components. And it does the same thing. It receives a prop called name and will print out um, an H1 with hello name. Um, similar to uh, the function components, you receive the prop and you render it. But uh, the difference here is that we do have this internal state which we can use, like I said uh, before, for example, for inputs, for different UI events or states of this component. And in addition, we can hook into the lifecycle methods, uh, like I mentioned earlier. The last uh, type of component I want to talk about, it's called a uh, pure component. The pure components are exactly the same as the class components, but there is only one crucial difference between them. The difference is that there is this function, this hook, called should component update. Should component update is uh, a lifecycle method which is triggered in a React component when either its parent has changed or the prop has changed. Usually you'll get to this when the parent has changed. And basically this function, the way it's fulfilled in the pure component, it asks two things. Are my new props the same as the props I have right now? And is the state I'm going to have right after this operation the same as the state I have right now? If the props and the state haven't changed, the com the, this function should component update returns false because it doesn't need to render again. And this is, as you can probably guess, great for performance. If you remember that um, slide that we had with the weights, you're, we are stopping it in the first segment. Um, the different component, the function component and the class components don't have this fulfilled. In the, in the function components, you can't fulfill it at all. And in the class components, it's just return true. Meaning that no matter what props or state you pass to this component, it will always render again and pass the responsibility for knowing if this component should render like uh, back to the, um, sorry, not back, to the virtual DOM. And then the virtual DOM decides if this needs to render or not. So what are they good for? Function components, as we just said, they're pretty straightforward, they're very dry, don't repeat yourself, and they're really easy to test. Just imagine any kind of function that you have, it's really easy to test, you just pass it a parameter, and knowing that if you pass to it eyal, you know that you will get an H1 with hello eyal. It's very easy to test and pretty simple uh, and straightforward. The class components uh, can be a lot more complex. Um, the classic example in the class component is the component did mount uh, lifecycle method. We usually use this when we want to fetch um, information from a server once the component uh, has loaded. So imagine um, any kind of web application you've ever used usually has this kind of uh, initial state when you're seeing like a spinner or something and the background in the component did mount, it's firing an action to the server, hey, get me the data I need. And then once that data has arrived, it's setting the state that says data arrived and shows you the, the table, divs, whatever it is. And that's how modern web works nowadays. And obviously, because it's a class, <coughs> it can be extended, uh, and, and you can use inheritance if you want with it. I know that um, the no object-oriented uh, people here are gonna scream. It's okay. I just want you to know that you can do it if you want to. Oops, sorry. Um, so the should component update Oh, sorry, something got screwed up. Okay, so sh pure component, um, like I said, same thing as class components, but we have that should component update fulfilled, and I claim that it's better for performance, and we're gonna test that out right now. So I promised a battle royale, so here is round one. Um, we're gonna test out uh, function components versus class components. 
And the way we're going to start this is, first of all, I'm going to start by showing you um, an article. This is a very famous um, blog post in Medium, which talks about component rendering in React. It's a little dated. It's about React 15. And now we are in React 16.8 something. But the principle is the same. And basically, this guy, um, I'll give you the TLDL. He put stateless versus stateful in pure components, toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, rendered them 10,000 times in milliseconds. Uh, I'm sorry, he rendered them 10,000 times. And he claimed that the performance is way, way better in pure components. Um, but my issue is when I see benchmarks like this, is that it's irrelevant to my day-to-day. -day. I mean, you know when you see like a benchmark of a cell phone or something, and it says the benchmark score is 2,000 something. How does that translate to your day-to-day? -day? It doesn't. So let's see how on a day-to-day -day, uh, web app, which I am building for this meetup, let's see uh, what, how this affects our performance. So, This is my web app. It's very beautiful, I know. And I have here a header with this spinning uh, React logo and the text field here and the table of users in my organization, um, which I am, an, I guess I'm an HR now since I'm recording, <laughs> so I need this a lot. And this app it's, uh, was created by uh, Create React App. It's like a CLI tool by React, which basically lets you type create React app, your name of your app, and boom, you have a working app. And I just added this random um, table and the text field. And once I type stuff in the text field, you'll see that value is, and it updates automatically. So let's look a little bit at the code. So um, this is basically um, the root of my app. You can see this is app.js, and I have the header and the amazing input that we just talked about a sec ago. And so I have um, the header. Let's look at the header. The header basically, it's just that logo that we just saw. And we have the amazing input. The amazing input, as you can see, it's a regular component. It initiates the state with value, which is blank. If you remember when we did a reload, the value is was uh, blank. It was nothing. And let's see, look at the, my render function. My render function here is I'm rendering that input, the paragraph tag, which is value is, and the value of that state. And I'm rendering here my table. And what I did here in the render table, I have a variable called component type. And according to the type of my component, I'm going to render, render the entire table either, either as a function table, function components table, a pure components table, or just a component table. And let's just look at, uh, for example, this function table. Um, as you can see, it starts out with uh, generating users. And this is basically the same code in all these components. It's just either a function or a class. It's the same thing. Um, generate user. It's basically a function I did here, which creates these uh, users using chance. It's completely random. And I have a variable here, which will decide uh, how many users uh, we want in this table. So, uh, <laughs> so let's start with something uh, small with 10 users. And we're going to start with um, the function components. So this is my um, 10 users in my text field here. And I'm typing here, hello, my name is. So far looks good. Let's type really, really fast. Looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's uh, make this more difficult. So let's change this now to 100 users. And let's see what happens. So now we have 100 users in our table. It's getting pretty big. We start typing. Still looks OK. Let's type quickly. 
I'm feeling a little bit of lag, nothing too serious, still okay. Let's see how this performs this 300, or even let's make this 400 to make it shorter. Okay, let's see what happens now. Okay, so now obviously the delay was very, very noticeable. Um, those of you who are um, sharp could actually see that the text that I'm writing, um, the dev tools in Chrome already show it, but it still doesn't uh, render on screen here because it's so, it's so much performance uh, heavy. And what's interesting here is that if I um, go to the tools here, and go to rendering, I can do um, paint flashing, which is basically, it shows me in the browser which part of the screen is being rendered. And as you can see, it's only this part, yet still my application is, oh, yet still my application is suffering very much, and it's working terribly. So let's do the same thing now. And uh, this time, we're gonna test out um, the class component. So let's just change this to component. And I'm gonna save you the trouble, and um, I'm not gonna go through the 10 and uh, 100 and 400. We'll just go straight to 400. And let's take this thing off. And let's see how it goes. So, Let's type. And again, the performance is pretty terrible. So in this round, if we go to our uh, slide, in this round, basically, um, function and class components, both were pretty equally terrible. Um, now let's put um, these class or function components against our uh, pure components, and let's see what happens. So. I'm gonna go again to my uh, generator. Let's start with uh, 100. And here we're gonna do pure. And let's see how it goes. All right, so let's start typing. So far, so good. So far, so good. Let's go to 400. Amazing. <laughs> so um, what is actually happening here? Why is this so, so much better than the function or class components? So obviously the pure components won by a landslide. And by the way, if I change this number from 400 to 1,000, if it's a function or class components, the browser just crashes. It just completely crashes, you have to kill it, and you can't do anything. And with pure components, it, it's almost the same performance, almost no change at all. Um, the reason for this is the should component update. This is the, this is the magic, okay? Uh, when we're using should component update for the, of, the pure comp of the pure class component, the comparison stops right here over here. It doesn't even get to the virtual DOM, let alone the DOM. And in the class, in the function components, and the class components, that stop sign is right here, actually. And as you can see, the virtual DOM comparison is much more expensive. I remember when the React um, kind of started, and people would completely ignore this, and are not, were not aware of this at all. And they would say, ah, the virtual DOM can take care of that for me. And uh, they, they're not aware of how much impact this can have on your performance. Um, so let's see how t we can optimize this performance or even make it better. So first of all, those of you who are, um, have sharp eyes and keen uh, saw that I made a mistake on purpose here. I put the input and the text together with the table. It's the same component, right? If you go back to the uh, code just for a sec. And we go to my uh, amazing input. 
you see that my render function renders both the input and the p tag and the render table, meaning that the changes from this component, since it's all in the same component, they force the should component update function to be called on this, which doesn't exist for some cases. So this was the um, crucial mistake here, um, but it was just a simple way to uh, have like a stress test to show what can happen uh, in uh, more complex applications. Obviously, so this is the right solution here. We want to separate the text components completely from the table here. So text changes will just affect the text box and the text, and they won't affect the table at all. Uh, this will probably render the best performance um, for sure. And we'll probably, well, not probably, we'll for sure we won't see a, a difference between function or class or pure components in this scenario because it doesn't take into effect. It's just the initial render. And since hopefully I didn't screw anything up, they're rendered only once when they load. However, when we're thinking about big applications, not just something silly and small like this, um, this tree, it's not just one, two, three, four, five levels in. It can be huge. If any of you, all of you which are working on production grade applications, know that your um, component trees are much, much, much bigger. You have many branches and leaves and it's, it's huge. And uh, mistakes can be made everywhere and the performance can be really crucial. Um, so I wrote here always prefer pure components and I didn't uh, necessarily just mean class components. Basically we wanna um, keep that uh, pure mindset um, throughout our development process, and I'll show you how you can solve this in the other components as well. Um, so one thing that we can do, first of all, about the class component is we can make it uh, work even better than a pure component. And the reason we can, the way we can do that is if we use um, the should component update and we fulfill it as return false. Basically, this means that once this component renders once, it will not render again no matter what. And this is really great for performance. It's uh, the holy grail of uh, React performance, you would say, except of uh, doing that separation, which I just said. Um, but you have to be really aware of this because if uh, your parent component has should component uh, render false, should update false, then everything underneath it will not render as well. Um, like the picture here shows. So you need to be very, very much aware and because this can bring unexpected bugs into your application. So use it with a grain of salt. Um, another thing you can do is you can use React Memo and this goes to the function components. Um, from React 16.6, um, there is a new higher order, higher order component called React Memo. Just out of curiosity, how many people here are on React 16.6 or up? So I think I see like 10 hands. So it's almost nobody because this is really like cutting edge, bleeding edge, and if you're on production grade applications, upgrading a React version, especially from 15 to 16 or even before, it's a lot of work. You have to make sure that you're not screwing things up. You have to roll it out slowly to your users. I know how much time it took in Wix and it, it's complex. Uh, you also need to be ready to roll it back. So it takes a while. You can't uh, automatically bring the new features in. But React Memo, so what does it do? Basically it's a higher order component, meaning it's a fancy word for a function which wraps around our component. And it gives us the exact same functionality as a pure component. Basically, it makes our function component pure. Um, let's see how this works on the same example we just did with the table with the 400 rows on the function. Let's see how it will look now. Uh, okay, so um, let's look at our function table. Um, so this is the function which we are exporting, which basically maps all the employees which we are rendering, the 400 employees. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in another uh, function from uh, React, and it's basically, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, we can, we'll just do it like this. We're gonna take this same function, and we're gonna wrap it with react.memo, 
And now let's go back to our amazing input. Change it to function. And we have 400. Let's see how it works now. All right, let's see. All right, so basically we got the same kind of performance as we did with the uh, pure class components. Um, what you need to make sure though is that first the covets are that you need to be, oops, you need to be on React 16.6 .6, uh, or up and you have to make sure that you don't forget to wrap new components. This is especially, um, can be uh, dangerous I would say to new developers which are not familiar with this and they might miss it and then their components will re-render all the time. Again, you might not notice it but every little thing makes a, a change in performance. 10 milliseconds that you cut here and here and here and here, it, it becomes a lot later. Um, I also had promised to talk about hooks a little bit. Um, basically what hooks are, Hooks are a way that we um, make our function components act more like uh, state components. Basically meaning um, that we, can ha we have a state for them which we can uh, render and change um, uh, within just this small function component without having to add a whole class and all the boilerplate that comes with it. Um, this is a uh, just came out, it's React 16.8, so probably even less of those 10 people are using it. Um, but it's all the rage. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I like it or not, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Okay, so if you remember, um, we have this uh, little uh, spinning logo here. So let's add a counter here, uh, which represents how many clicks we've clicked on this very component. Uh, so we have the header. And as you can see, it's a function component. And let's uh, change it to, um, to basically do the hooks. So first of all, we need to import another thing from React. It's a function called useState. Basically, this is some sort of an initializer of the state of this component. And the way you use it is before you render the component before the return function. Um, you need to call this function. And you pass to it the initial state of the value which is going to be of that state. So if we have a counter, we want it to start from zero, right? And this function returns to us um, two variables. One is the count, the value. So when we start this application, it's gonna be zero. And the second, is a function which will be what we, what we will be using to update this number. So let's first start uh, by seeing if we can get this number to render. So let's add here uh, h3 and uh, count. And let's see how this looks now. All right, I have the count here. This does nothing at the moment and I'm going to add uh, on this image, I'm going to add an on click. And when, when somebody clicks on this image, I'm going to do uh, update count, and it's going to take the count plus one. So hopefully every click will increment this by one. Let's see if it worked. Amazing. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> All right, so um, that's the hooks. And um, this is like, a, basically it gives us the ability to use these small, tiny components and we can use a state with them now. Uh, obviously, this looks nice or relatively nice, depends if you like uh, the structuring like this. This is classic ES6 code. Um, but you need to take into consideration that first of all, you need really uh, like the cutting, bleeding edge version of React to use this. Uh, and in addition, if this component was a little bit more complex and we had uh, several properties in this state, for example, account and uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know, expanded or something, like 
like it's common for a uh, class component to have uh, three attributes in the states, for example, we would need to uh, repeat this type of code three times with three different uh, functions, with three different initializers and so on. You can even see that I'm getting a hint here that you need React 16.8. And the last thing that we can do with, uh, with this uh, type of a component to make it even more like a class component is we can add a lifecycle method to it. Again, this is also React 16.8, but it's also something which uh, the community is talking a lot about. So let's just see a, a tiny example for it. Basically what it does, it lets you um, run a function when a component has uh, been rendered, whether it's the first render or uh, subsequent renders and so on. So let's see how we do this. Okay, so we need to, we need to import uh, one more uh, function. It's gonna, call, it's gonna be called use effect. And the way we use it is that we uh, call this function and it itself receives a function. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna print uh, console log and, and say I've been rendered and also put the count in. So let's see if we can see this console log here. Okay, you can see it here. It says I've been rendered zero. Maybe I can make this bigger. All right, and let's see what happens when we click. Okay, so basically this function runs every time the component renders and we can do various types of things here. Like we said, for example, fetch the data, I don't know, uh, interact with something, and so on. Um, one last um, thing I wanted to uh, mention was about um, Redux and its higher order component. Um, how many people here use uh, Redux in production? Okay, so uh, most of you, great. And a lot of people don't know, I mean this, if you use Redux in production, uh, you probably already know this function, it's called uh, connect. And uh, usually um, it takes two arguments, the map state to, to props function and map dispatch to props functions and passes this on to our component. In this case, it's called my component. But most people don't know this, but there are actually two more um, uh, arguments that this function takes. One of them is verge props, which by default, it's, it's just a spread operator or object extend of the map state and the map dispatch. And the last uh, argument, it's called options. And this is where it gets uh, pretty interesting. Options actually has six different uh, arguments and f five of them <laughs> are actually related to being pure or not. So by default, React Redux is actually a pure higher order component. Uh, by default, pure is true and then it checks um, these four uh, functions. Um, just quickly like to say what they are, uh, you should probably read in the documentation more. Are states equal, it basically checks if the state, specific state from Redux, if it's changed from what's uh, right now in this map state of uh, props function. Are own props equal, basically if the props which are directly injected into this component are, have changed or not. Uh, are state props equal if the entire thing which is returned from the map state uh, has changed or not? And are merge props equal basically the entire object extend spread up which I was just explained? Um, those of you who are not using Redux, sorry this was kind of um, not uh, clear, but um, it's kind of hard in this uh, short presentation to go into this. Um, but you should definitely go and read about this. And if you really want to dive and try to t tweak your performance even more, you can actually fulfill these functions and do something special for it uh, in it. Uh, a nice example which I saw, well, I don't think it's nice because I don't like um, the idea, but if you're, for some reason, you have to mutate your state, um, then you can actually do uh, a deep compare in the states equal and so on and so forth. I don't personally recommend it, but you know, everybody has their own thing. Um, yeah, my slides got screwed up. So, thank you.